Tabo conquering Mega Eagle. All right then, folks. <laughs> so, what's going on today then? Um, bit of painting, I suppose. Uh, painting and, and getting this thing running. Um, so what? Um, I'm just giving it a get this uh, dump bed out of the way first. Uh, I didn't actually manage to get this fitted by the end of the video. Uh, but logically, from a logistical point of view, uh, it kind of dictated getting this painted so I could sit it outside. So that was the first job. Um, there's a few challenges painting, painting in this little shed of mine. Uh, I mean, it's not that little. I don't want to sound ungrateful. I'm very, very happy to have a shed as large as mine, but uh, for a project this size, I've got to be, got to be thinking about what order I do things in, you know. So uh, after getting the bed out of the way, we're stripping the rest of the, the rest of the old dumper McTrumper down to bare bones. The access panels off. Yeah, it's amazing taking this apart. I, I kind of forgotten how much work had gone into this. I, every every day I look at this, I kind of think, why is this taking me so long? And then, uh, you know, like that drive shaft, I, you know, look at those splines, and they <laughs> just cutting the splines out on the lathe took me a a fair old amount of time. Um, yeah, and the fuel tank as well. I mean, that was, that was quite a bit of work. I know it just looks like an old fire extinguisher, but um, you know, it's got the fuel and the hydraulic in the same tank. Um, okay. Not that I'm making excuses for the amount of time this is taking. I should be uh, should be digging an underground um, underground workshop right now, but. Uh, you know, I'm I'm enjoying putting the time into this dump truck, and I've uh, I don't think I've cut any corners, and you guys have reminded me a few bits that I've forgotten. So <laughs> you know, thanks for that. And so, so what? I should have a a dump truck for life with this one. You know, I don't think I'll ever be able to overload it. That axle solid, and I've got a, a spare diff or two in the shed because they came straight from China. Yeah, I've got all the important bits around the shed covered up. You know, there's sheets over my chainsaws and parts and the milling machine and the label all covered up. Everything else is getting overspray on it. Just using a little particle mask at the minute. Uh, um, that got old pretty quickly. And it's, I'm not not trying to flatten it all down. It's just the uh, just the most uh, prominent surfaces. Again, I'm kicking up dust and stuff when I spray, so it's you know had to flatten it off a bit. In my um, I think it's a Polish gas mask. They're really cheap. It's what I use for painting the inside of my shipping containers. It works so well. You know, for painting the outside of the shipping containers. I had a uh, I didn't have any mask on at all, and it gave me a terrible headache. Um, but uh, this mask, this mask worked beautifully. I couldn't even taste the paint with this on. So this is my new, uh, <laughs> my new mask for, for painting. It hasn't got the best visibility, but for 20 quid, I don't think you can uh, you can get much better. Okay, my new tire turned up. It came quite a while ago, but I'm only just putting it on. I know people struggle sometimes getting uh, getting the bead seated. A lot of people use butane or um, Easy Start or something like that, but I, I really like using a ratchet strap on high profile tires like this. You know, tires with a chunky sidewall works really well. Works really well. You give it a little wiggle around. Definitely make sure you don't get your fingers stuck in there. Yeah, that did give me a bit of a shock. <laughs> you know, it's going to be under pressure, isn't it? 
probably you could you could take the pressure back out of the tyre before you release the ratchet strap because the bead won't come off. Or, you know, takes a bit of effort to break the bead, doesn't it? Either way. Like I was saying, I start start getting this back together and doing the little bits. I'm just doing a bit of sign lighting here on the front. And at the same time I'm I'm painting the little bits. That's why there's a sheet on the front of the dumper. Do a little bit of work on the dumper whilst the little bit's dry. Cover the dumper up and then uh paint some more little bits. <laughs> that was uh that was how it went for a for a week or two I suppose. This worked quite nicely with the sign writing, just using a, one of the paint pens to do the, the border of my letters and then uh, then cutting them with a brush or filling them out with a brush I suppose. Um, you know, a lot of respect for the old, um, old school sign writers and that. I quite like the artwork on old trucks and narrow boats and gypsy wagons. Pretty beautiful. And it's nice. It's nice seeing stuff done in a brush. I mean, I'm not saying I've done a good job, but I like. I like that look. You can tell instantly when something's been airbrushed in or done with a paintbrush. And I'm not saying airbrushing doesn't look nice. I, I love the. I love the. Um, you know, articulated lorries with the airbrushing on them. They're great. Um, but uh, but what? It doesn't suit older vehicles. I don't think you sort of expect to see the brush strokes and old something old, didn't you? Yeah. Not that this is old, but <laughs> you know. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the problems I'm having with paint were. Well, because I'm not filtering my paint, um, you know, I'm using pots of paint that I've been using with a brush, and I've contaminated the paint a lot. I should, I should get some paint filters really. It just save a lot of these issues. I had the gun block a couple of times. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world. Not with a primer anyway. You can always flatten it back a bit. You can with a top coat as well. It just means waiting for it to dry. And obviously, top coat takes a lot longer than uh, than primer to dry unless you're using two pack or something. Half of me thinks I should have used two pack, but you know the the overspray is a real problem when you use two pack. Like you got to sheet up absolutely everything because there's no way you're getting it off unless you unless you use a cutting compound. This is just uh, what do you call it? Organic paint, I suppose. Um, anyway, I'm just putting some heat wrap on the exhaust. It gets a bit close to the to the chassis in a couple of areas, um, and it will keep the keep the sort of engine enclosure temperatures down a bit if I wrap it as well. So um, I didn't get on very well with the with the metal cable ties, so I'm, I'm cutting them off and using wire locking instead. Much better. I'm I'm quite at home with wire locking. It's fine. All those, all those panels painted up now, and the last little job was was sticking some oil in the uh, in the axle. This is a very expensive limited slip diff oil from when I used to have a a trooper, but uh, I haven't got anything that takes this oil at the minute, so um, <laughs> it's going in here, isn't it?
Okay, so look at this beautiful machine. All right, obviously it's not complete. We haven't got a, I haven't got a tipper bed on it at the minute. Um, just wanted to get it operating nicely. Um, I think not having the tipper bed is part of the problem I'm having right now. Uh, what is it? Yeah, we're, we're cocking a leg on, um, you can see I've been up and down this track. It's a road that everyone's forgotten about in the middle of England, so uh, so it's in a pretty poor condition. This is actually a public road, believe it or not, but um, I'm the only person living down here. Either way, we got um, we got a good bit of terrain to try the truck out on, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm not getting the front axle articulation to allow both back wheels to be on the deck all the time. The other thing is when it's when it's fully loaded with mud, you know, um, that's going to put the back, back axle on the floor and uh you know even if one one wheel is going to lift it's not going to be one of the driven wheels it's going to be one of the front wheels but regardless uh that's one of the problems i've got right now um the other thing is the steering um, for whatever reason i mean I, I knew there was going to be a little bit of deflection um with the with this steering the way it is, yeah, because I've got wish arm, wish arm suspension, and the the point at which the steering pivots in the steering box is nowhere near the uh, the pivot for the wish arm. Yep, yeah? it's just single wish arm. Obviously, there's not um, there's not two of them there, so the wheel actually um, alters its camber as the as the arm radius is. Um, uh, kind of like a McPherson strut, but without the without the added articulation at the at the kingpin or whatever you want to call it um so what, where does that leave us yeah so that means that throughout the travel of the suspension the angle of the wheel changes a little bit yeah um which isn't a huge problem and certainly certainly i'm not really that aware of it when i'm going forwards but um in reverse it's uh it's a lot more severe because i've set it with a little bit of towing at the minute without me sat on it and then when I sit on it, it kind of, it's kind of uh, it's kind of straight um, they're pointing, the, pointing in a nice direction but um, but what uh, I've got to think of a better, better way of doing this steering basically and I mean I could kill two birds with one stone they originally was debating whether or not to put a, put a beam axle on the front you know um, a swing swing axle like you normally see on unpowered wheels on on heavy goods vehicles and that um, but, but I didn't I went with the suspension that I had to save myself time and now I'm paying the price aren't I eh? got a couple of runs in the paint there looks nice though I'm quite pleased with how it's come out like the colors like the sign writing nice bit of a uh, nice bit of bling on the front there with that um, metallic bronze got the air filter mounted Oh, I'll try and stay out of the sun. And engine's nicely tucked away there, runs sweet as a nut. Gearing is beautiful. Yeah, that is a uh, that is one thing I'm, I'm very happy with. Um, I might even have a little tinker with the CVT so it engages at a lower engine RPM. Um, at the minute, I'm I'm kind of opening her up quite a bit before it engages, which is completely normal with this. But once it engages, it pulls pulls good and strong and hard. Um, uh what yeah i kind of it doesn't feel that comfortable at speed at the minute but i'm pretty sure that's just because i've got no weight on the back end and we're quite rough here and that back end's dancing around all over the place uh, i did nearly put it in a dike down there because the the back end just hopped around um and really i don't want to i don't want this falling on top of me as it is well at all really yeah i mean i'm you know it's not that heavy probably wouldn't kill me but it'd certainly make a mess of something Quite happy with how it's looking now. Eh? Uh, got to make a couple of changes though. So hopefully, I mean you've seen it run now. Um, hopefully next time I can get that steering sorted. It's going to take a bit of thinking on that. Get the steering sorted and get the uh, get the bed on the back and get the whole thing working. Yeah. All right. But I think that's enough for today anyway, folks. Okay. All right. I'll catch you later. Bye bye.